लेट्स गो हेड वी आर स्टिल इन द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ अवर सब्जेक्ट सी ए फाइनल डायरेक्ट टैक्स मेजर पोर्शन एज फार एज द इंट्रोडक्शन इज कंसर्न लाइक इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट द फैकल्टी सब्जेक्ट स्टडी मटीरियल एक्सेट्रा एज यू आर अवेयर इज ऑलरेडी ओवर बट नाउ वी हैव टू डू टैक्स रेट्स एंड वी आर वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड इट वी हैव टू नाउ कंप्लीट इट we are in the old regime the existing regime of taxation and in that also we are still under individuals and in that also we are still at basic tax hello i hope you are understanding this much old regime individual only basic tax only that much is finished so first we will have to complete rebate surcharge cess then we will go to other assessees that will complete our old regime and then we go to the new regime that is going to be our chronology to give you a quick recap of what we have studied under individual tax rates so far can you see the screen yes. all right so we are in currently the existing taxation regime for previous year 21 22 assessment year 22 23 which is also the applicable ay for your exam may 22 as well as november 22 individual will be divided in three categories are we clear higher basic exemption limit will be available only if the assessee is resident otherwise it will not be available and that 60 or 80 can be equal to also it need not be greater than and again important that 60 or 80 can become equal to at any time during the previous year or 1st april of the assessment year also all other individuals non residents of any age will fall in category a and these were the slabs that we discussed and studied the difference lies in the basic exemption so first 250 no tax for the first category then 5% 20% 30% that basic exemption will change to 3 lakh rupees for category b and it will change to 5 lakh rupees for category c to summarize how we are going to calculate tax for this assessee i would just like to give you a recap the income in excess of 10 lakh into 30% plus what was the fixed amount of tax at 10 lakh rupees first category 1 lakh 12500 if we talk about category b income in excess of 10 lakh into 30% plus the fixed amount of tax hello we are talking about the second assessee second assessee income in excess of 10 lakh into 30% plus what is the fixed amount of tax 1 lakh 10000 in case of category b 1 lakh 10000 and in case of category c income in excess of 10 lakh into 30% plus a flat amount of 1 lakh that is going to be your basic tax it is still going to undergo changes and those are the concepts that we will learn today but before we go to the concepts i wanted to give you a disclaimer i am not teaching this in this chapter there is a special dedicated chapter in our textbook called special rates of tax because most of you all have already received the textbook you can have a look at it that's our chapter number 5 special rates of tax well we will learn these concepts in some chapter or the other they will be discussed in other chapters what i only want you to understand is even if you learn these slab rates there will always be certain incomes which won't be taxed at these rates they will be taxed at different rates i think as far as long term capital gains or casual winnings is concerned you must be having some idea also about it at least casual winnings that it does not get taxed at betting and uh, uh, betting money horse races money it does not get taxed at normal rates it will get taxed at a special rate of 30% so what we will have to do is compute our ntti that is total of our heads of income split our ntti into two parts any income which is taxable under chapter 12 what rate we will apply on that income special the special rate which is prescribed under chapter 12 like 30% for casual winning or 20% for long term capital gain and all our other incomes will be taxable at the normal slab rates whether you fall in category a b or c as the case may be understood by the way we already discussed this yesterday this was only a revision and now we will go ahead what we have till now calculated whether normal rate or special rate if applicable it is only our basic tax this is not our final tax liability the tax that we have calculated will undergo certain changes this tax is going to change and you cannot complete a tax calculation unless and until you learn these three concepts now as far as giving the heading is concerned you can say concepts in tax calculation 
और पॉइंट्स इन टैक्स कैलकुलेशन और पॉइंट्स टू बी नोटेड और समथिंग एज सिंपल एज दिस मच इज ऑल्सो गुड इनफ गुड इनफ वॉट आर दी कॉन्सेप्ट दैट विल चेंज अवर टैक्स लाइबिलिटी थ्री कॉन्सेप्ट वी विल लर्न दैम वन बाय वन फर्स्ट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ रिबेट अंडर सेक्शन एटी सेवन ए दिस सेक्शन एटी सेवन ए इज अंडर द इनकम टैक्स एक्ट सो नॉर्मली टैक्स रेट आर गिवन इन द बजेट फाइनेंस एक्ट बट दिस इज अ सेक्शन ऑफ इनकम टैक्स एक्ट रिबेट अंडर सेक्शन एटी सेवन ए वेन एवर वर्ड लाइक रिबेट रिलीफ रिडक्शन वी कॉल इट भिकारी भिकारी वर्ड वेन एवर सच वर्ड आर यूज दैट मीन्स देर इज गोइंग टू बी अ रिडक्शन वी आर गोइंग टू रिड्यूस वेट प्लीज डू नॉट मेक अ मिस्टेक यूर सम ब्राइटेस्ट स्टूडेंट गो रॉन्ग यूर ब्राइटेस्ट स्टूडेंट वी आर गोइंग टू रिड्यूस वॉट if if i take the example of these three guys we had 12 lakh and then we had 170 to 500 let's talk about the category a assessing obviously for category b it was 170 for category c it was 160 what will reduce 12 lakh will reduce or 170 to 500 will reduce do not make this mistake do not make this mistake this is reduction in your tax liability i would like to specifically mention not entity rebate will reduce what this will reduce your tax liability means whatever is the calculation of rebate we will subtract it from 12 lakh tell me yes or no 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 we will subtract it from 170 to 500 the tax liability see listen anything that gets subtracted from income we call it exemption or deduction in exemption deduction also there is a difference exemption is something that we don't add in our entity i at all like income from agriculture or share of profit from partnership firm it does not get added in our income but deduction is something that will get first added and then subtracted like your life insurance premium medical insurance premium donation your chapter 6 a kind of deductions they will first get added and then get subtracted but exemption and deduction will be available against our entity i rebate will be available against not our entity i rebate will be against our tax liability come on please you will have to increase your participation levels in class so if i am asking you after teaching rebate will be reduced from what you can't wait and waste time you have to immediately answer rebate will be reduced from ha huh, immediately immediately rebate will be reduced from tax liability matlab listen as a chartered accountant i have calculated your tax 170 to 500 170 160 whichever category you fall in but i am saying it will get reduced start dancing as an assessee if your tax liability is going to reduce obviously you will start dancing but while you are dancing you should have answers to two questions question 1 what are the conditions to get rebate do you give rebate to everyone if you do then reduce it here itself why is it a separate concept because the truth is rebate will not be available to All assessees, what are the conditions to be eligible for rebate? First question, and of course, can you guess? Guess the second question, please. Can you try to guess the second question? No, no, I am not asking the condition. I am asking there will be one more question. After you learn the condition, what will you learn after conditions? what is going to be the quantum of rebate how much rebate will full 170 to 500 become zero no. or will only a part of it that's the question we will answer don't worry i am not asking the answer but are you understanding the two questions here i as a chartered accountant i am telling you i will reduce your tax liability two questions first question 
what are the conditions that i need to fulfill and second question what is going to be the quantum of rebate conditions and quantum are are you following who will get rebate first condition you have to be a resident that means listen learn the law from both angles if the condition says that rebate will be allowed only to resident that means if the assessee is non resident then rebate not allowed, not allowed. or can i conclude listen if you understand once you become a non resident you will not get higher basic exemption limit even if you are a senior citizen yes sir because that was also only resident and second you will also not get rebate and learning provisions applicable to non resident become very important in the present day scenario of ca final exams because of international tax anything that i discuss about non resident is your part of your portion of international tax so assessee has to be a resident plus plus means and means cumulative condition you have to fulfill all rebate is going to be available only to individual means if the assessee is huf company firm we are yet to learn the tax rates we have not learned the tax rates but one thing is for sure that to huf company firm aop local authority there is not going to be any rebate rebate will be allowed only to individuals and third rebate will be allowed if your net taxable total income ha bolo mohini please tell me what were you saying so your answer is 5 like basically that is what she said and now tell me one thing that means if the income is 4 lakh do you get rebate yes if it is 6 lakh then do you get rebate obviously no if it is 5 lakh then these are things that matter and people don't pay attention out of habit people say rebate is available if income is less than 5 lakh rebate is available if income is less than 5 lakh that means you don't know that rebate is available if income is less than nahi not less than less than or equal to up to 5 lakhs not greater than 5 lakh not greater will also cover less than it will also cover equal to in conclusion if my income is exact 5 lakh also i am still going to be eligible for rebate how much rebate quantum i will teach you don't worry about that but first understand the eligibility your income has to be 5 lakh or less then you will be eligible for rebate resident individual income stop saying less than 5 lakh you will say less than or equal to that's the easiest way or if you want to be technical then your correct terminology is not exceeding 5 lakh which covers less than and equal to both so come here first assessee 172 500 second assessee 170 third assessee 160 you still have these amounts they are all less than 5 lakh and therefore rebate please be very careful very very careful you don't have to check the tax amount you have to check the ntti amount the job of a teacher is not just to teach you the concept also born you where you can go wrong and some good and bright students i have seen going wrong they pick up the income amount of 12 lakh they calculate the tax as per the slabs that you have studied when they get 170 to 500 they are so excited less than 5 lakh wow less than 5 lakh wow and they end up giving rebate but the truth is that you don't have to check the amount of tax you have to check the amount of ntti to decide the eligibility and why are these three assessees ineligible for rebate then because their ntti 
has exceeded rupees 5 lakh you don't have to check the amount of tax you have to check the amount of income is this understood entity i up to rupees 5 lakh then you are going to be eligible for acha by the way listen what if i tell you that these three assessees are resident individuals of course in category b and category c you have to be resident if they are resident individuals have they fulfilled the two out of three conditions that means 67% conditions are fulfilled two out of three that's more than half then you should give rebate no na it has to be 100% it is cumulative all conditions should be fulfilled that means even if one condition is dissatisfied assessee will be ineligible for rebate the three conditions to get rebate are resident individual income up to 5 lakh so why are these assessees not eligible even if they are resident individual their income has exceeded rupees 5 lakh we have to check the income amount i am not done i have some questions orally i am asking you okay supposingly my income is this time not 12 lakh 4 lakh rupees okay look in my eyes can you see basic exemption limit i am below that can you see the poverty here below basic exemption limit but assume that my income is 4 lakh rupees assume 4 lakh okay while you are looking into my eyes wait you think i have ever gone abroad foreign <laughs> looks are deceptive <laughs> listen even if i have gone abroad last financial year no one has gone abroad okay and residential status i am going to cover by the way i am going to cover residential status also in your portion not just the heads of income or clubbing set up but also the residential status because international tax requires you to distinguish between resident and non resident without that you cannot go further so i am going to cover that don't worry about that but as per rules once you spend 182 days in india that is 6 months in india then you are going to be treated as resident so i am resident i am an individual and my income is 4 lakh then i am going to be eligible for rebate have you understood this supposingly i was non resident ineligible for rebate supposingly this assessee with income of rupees 4 lakh is a company or a firm or huf ineligible for rebate it has to be resident individual and income up to 5 lakh up to means less than and equal to both covered will assessee get rebated exact 5 lakh yes. yes resident individual entity i up to 5 lakh so if i am a resident i am an individual and my income is rupees 4 lakh am i eligible for rebate i'll repeat my data i'll repeat i am a resident i am an individual income huh? not tax income is 4 lakh am i eligible then what is going to be your quantum of rebate first calculate your actual tax liability means you have to apply the slabs first step is going to be calculate the actual tax liability so on 4 lakh calculate the tax say my age less than 60 years calculate please you know the slabs you still remember the slabs calculate tax at 4 lakh rupees by using the slabs Seven thousand five hundred actual tax liability, or rupees twelve thousand five hundred, whichever is lower. The amount of rebate which you will be eligible for is actual tax or twelve thousand five hundred out of the two, whichever is lower. So if the actual tax is seven thousand five hundred, obviously your rebate can be only seven thousand five hundred and make your liability zero. You cannot make it negative and ask for a refund, obviously. actual tax or 12500 whichever is lower you can learn it like this also that maximum rebate will be 12500 one and the same make sense to you maximum rebate will be 12500 so if my income was 4 lakh rupees i have to give some examples that is very important without these examples no there is always going to be some confusion some doubt in my mind supposingly resident individual and entity i 
फोर लैख द क्वेश्चन दैट वी सॉल्व राइट नाउ ओरली वॉट द एक्चुअल टैक्स सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड और वॉट इज मैक्सिमम तो ऑब्वियसली दैट इज मैक्सिमम इन विच एवर इज लोअर दिस विल बी योर आंसर But of course, first you have to check whether SSC has fulfilled all the three conditions. What are the three conditions for eligibility of rebate? Yes, up to five. Lakh. Excellent. Second question. Resident, individual, entity I, five lakh rupees. You are not going to calculate rebate first. First, tell me whether SSC is eligible. That is the first decision that you have to take. Only then you will decide. Quantum is secondary. First question is whether SSC is eligible. Are it is not less than no. So now understood the importance of equal to, and that starts right up to. your senior citizen were equal to 60 and equal to 80 were also covered from there you have to pay attention to equal to so assess is eligible once the assess is eligible we go to quantum tell me orally what is the quantum of rebate 5 orally yes sir in words what is the rule not the answer the rule rule not the answer my bad i should have asked the question in a correct manner my question is not the answer here my question is what is the rule chalo excellent first tell me what is the actual tax liability at 5 lakh rupees 12500 or obviously maximum 12500 do you understand you choose any one your answer to rebate is going to be 12500 only and again it will become zero Correct or no? At this stage, some good students, intelligent students, and by the way, when I say intelligent student, that means everyone, because you are sitting in a CA final classroom. Let me remind you that you are sitting in a place where less than one percent of the country's population can even think of entering. Forget about actual entry. Okay, you are better than ninety-nine percent of the country's population. because they don't even think of coming they forget about reaching they don't even think of reaching hello any student who is yet to give foundation exam but only has come to take a feel of final ca that if i like final ca then i will join ca nahi so you are in ca final so if you are in ca final you need to be talented enough to understand what i am saying now The eligibility for rebate will stop at five lakh if the income is exceeding five lakh rupees. I am ineligible. And the highest tax liability possible at income level of five lakh is this, sir. In fact, that was also category A SSC. If it was category B, resident sixty to seventy nine, then this would have come at ten thousand only. No, you remember the tax in five percent bracket. And if it was super senior, eighty years and above, then this tax only was zero. Up to five lakh rupees, there is no tax, sir. Then you saying actual tax on twelve thousand five hundred, whichever is lower, is technically incorrect because the actual tax will never be higher than twelve thousand five hundred. Did you understand what I said? At five lakh rupees, of course. If my income exceeds five lakh rupees, my actual tax will exceed twelve thousand five hundred. but then i am not eligible no this is why i mentioned about chapter 12 i am not going to teach you chapter 12 here in introduction i have a separate chapter special rates of tax this is why i mentioned about chapter 12 that you will understand the impact of chapter 12 in your calculation at least if you have some knowledge about it chapter 12 means special rates of tax let me give you a third example assessee is resident individual and the entity i is 5 lakh rupees so first question eligible for rebate or ineligible for rebate eligible, eligible. equal to 5 lakh also and the other two conditions are also fulfilled 
प्लीज मेक श्योर यू रिमेंबर इट हैज टू बी रेसिडेंट इट हैज टू बी इंडिविजुअल एंड इनकम हैज टू बी अप टू फाइव लैक करेक्ट नाउ सी असेस इज गिविंग यू ब्रेकअप ऑफ दिस फाइव लैक द फाइव लैक कंप्राइसिस ऑफ सैलरी इनकम ऑफ फोर लैक इज वर्किंग इन अ वेरी बिग कॉर्पोरेट कंपनी गेटिंग अ सैलरी ऑफ फोर लैक रुपीज एंड लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन विच इज टैक्सेबल अंडर सेक्शन वन वन टू वन लैक Excuse me. Long term capital gain taxable under one one two one lakh. See, listen. Long term capital gains. There are two sections in chapter twelve. There is a section one one two and there is a section one one two a. One one two a stock market. Sale of equity shares or units of equity or entity mutual fund on stock market. STT paid. For that the tax rate is a little different. First one lakh, there is no tax, and on the balance there is ten percent. I am not discussing anything because it is a part of my agenda. When there will be an appropriate time, I will teach you everything. I am not going to leave anything which is relevant for your exam. Anything which is relevant for your exam will be taught. But currently I am not discussing stock market. I am discussing normal LTCG like sale of land or sale of house or sale of jewelry. Such long term capital gains are covered in one one two. My question is. You will remember the range of special rates, section number range, hundred and ten to one one five BBG. Does one one two long term capital gain section one one two fall in that range? Does it fall in that range? Yes. Yes. And thus, long term capital gains will be taxable at a special rate, which is a prescribed rate of twenty percent under one one two. I am not teaching you; I am just telling you when that chapter will come. I will teach also. Taxable at. 20% and thus on this 5 lakh when you calculate your tax you cannot apply slabs on this ladies and gentlemen you cannot apply slabs whenever your income comprises of anything taxable at special rate you will have to segregate tell me what is going to be the breakup 1 lakh will be taxable at 20% that's the special rate and 4 lakh will be taxable at slabs have you understood 1 lakh at 20% and 4 lakh at slabs so do you understand you get 20000 tax year and 7500 year and what is your total basic tax then total will be 27500 do you understand now i have proved it to you that it is possible that ntti is 5 lakh but tax is more than 12500 whenever our income has special rate income it is possible understood now first question is the assessee eligible for rebate yes because all three conditions are fulfilled and second question what is going to be the quantum of rebate actual tax 27500 or 12500 whichever is lower here we will give rebate of only 12500 this third example was done only to prove that sometimes tax can be more than 12500 also even if income is up to 5 lakh that is if assessee has got any income which is taxable at special rate now understood the third example so for one last time i am going to conclude the concept now for one last time just answer two questions question number 1 what are the three conditions to get rebate please participate resident individual and family member of course and once i fulfill the conditions what are Or what is going to be the quantum of rebate? Whichever is lower. That was your first concept. So, does rebate have potential power to change your tax liability? Yes. So, unless and until you learn these concepts, you cannot conclude tax rates. And that also, we are in the old regime right now. once we get done with the old regime of all assessees then we peacefully move on to the new regime of taxation all the discussion will be done everything will whenever the concept will come at that time we will discuss the concept in detail okay 
वंस वी आर डन विद द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ रिबेट लेट्स गो टू द सेकंड कॉन्सेप्ट नंबरिंग इज एबीसी नो सो रिबेट वाज कॉन्सेप्ट ए रिबेट अंडर 87 है सेकंड कॉन्सेप्ट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सरचार्ज रिबेट इज फॉर पुअर पीपल व्हाट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ पुअर इनकम अप टू 5 लाख सो वी विल रिड्यूस योर टैक्स सरचार्ज इज फॉर रिच पीपल it is going to be an increase in tax liability if you are super rich means what is the difference between rebate and surcharge rebate will reduce your tax and surcharge will increase your tax when will surcharge come it will depend on your net taxable total income pay very careful attention If your NTTI exceeds rupees fifty lakh, there will be ten percent surcharge. If your NTTI then later exceeds rupees one crore, there will be fifteen percent surcharge. If your NTTI exceeds two crore, twenty five percent surcharge, and if your NTTI exceeds five crore. 37 percent surcharge will be applicable. I call this the Mukesh by surcharge. I am one of the few people who will fall in this surcharge. Don't forget, we are doing individual tax calculation. Companies can have income exceeding five crore, ten crore, or anything. Please pay attention. But the surcharge rates that I have given you here are applicable for individual. Just oral, orally, I am telling you only for your knowledge. For firms, for companies, surcharge comes directly after one crore. It does not come only after fifty lakh. For partnership firm, LLP companies, surcharge will come after one crore, after fifty lakh, like at sixty lakh, seventy lakh, eighty lakh. There will not be any surcharge after fifty lakh. Surcharge will start for individuals. What rate? Ten percent. After one crore, what rate? Fifteen percent. After two crore, what rate? Twenty-five percent. And after five crore. 37%. But this is not as easy as you are thinking it is, because in-depth discussion is now going to be done. Please pay attention. How many conditions for rebate? Number of conditions. Number of conditions. Three conditions. Resident, individual, income up to five lakh. Only three conditions. For surcharge, only one condition. Your income should cross this limit. Have I written that this surcharge will be applicable for resident or non-resident? No. And when it is not mentioned, means surcharge is applicable for whom? Resident or non-resident? No. When it is not mentioned, means of course it will be applicable for resident, non-resident both. See, in rebate we mentioned no, only for resident. But if in surcharge we don't mention. then what do you understand this is required ha huh? in in ca final direct tax this is a big requirement you have to understand what is written in front of you you have to also interpret what is not written if they do not define the assc it means resident and non resident both will be covered that's the first thing that i wanted you to observe so rebate will be available for resident non resident none or both Rebate, rebate. The rate will be available. Resident, the resident. Okay. Surcharge will surcharge. You do not use the word available. You say applicable. You know you have to modify your terminology. Surcharge will be applicable on whom? Resident, non-resident, none or both. Okay. Understood the difference here? Correct. Very good. Next question. Rebate is applicable only to one SSC individual. So the moment you go to HUF, AOP, company, firm, LLP, no rebate, no rebate, no rebate because rebate is available only to individual. In surcharge, of course, I have not mentioned anywhere that surcharge is applicable only for individual. Obviously, it means surcharge is applicable for all SSCs, but the rates are different. So I am not writing all SSCs here. because if i write all assessees like i wrote resident non resident 
if i write all assessees then you will end up thinking that all of them have same rates no please for companies and firms as i already told you orally surcharge comes after 1 crore it does not come after 50 lakh so currently we are learning tax rates of which assessee under individual i have given you rates of surcharge for individual as and when i move further in your portion when i teach you tax rates of huf i will give you surcharge of huf when i teach you tax rate of company or firm i will give you the respective surcharge all i want to tell you right now is surcharge will come for everyone rates may be different but it will come for everyone rebate will come only for individual that also only if resident surcharge will come for everyone whether resident or non resident rates we will learn as and when we go further followed third thing you know these things are relevant you need to pay attention and everything is not there on paper because certain things are discussed in class so please pay attention if my income is exact equal to 5 lakh rupees do i get rebate yes yes if my income is exact equal to 50 lakh rupees will there be surcharge to no, no. so here you need to pay attention that means that exact 5 lakh rebate is applicable but at exact 50 lakh surcharge come on is not applicable ha ah, ah. at exact 5 lakh rebate is applicable but at exact 1 crore surcharge applicable applicable, applicable. 10% not 15 but 10 is applicable because 1 crore is not greater than 1 crore but 1 crore is greater than 50 lakh no hmm. you understood yes. 10% will be applicable then tell me at exact 2 crore will there be surcharge yes which percentage 15 percentage at exact 5 crore will there be surcharge Yes, which one? Twenty-five percent, and of course, greater than five crore will make it thirty-seven percent. That means rebate will come at equal to five lakh, but surcharge rate will change only when it becomes greater than. So till equal to fifty lakh, rate will be zero percent. No surcharge. Greater than fifty lakh. till equal to 1 crore it will be 10% greater than 1 crore till equal to 2 crore it will be 15 greater than 2 crore till equal to 5 crore it will be 25 and greater than 5 crore it will be 37% understood so three differences i already pointed out between rebate and surcharge very quickly rebate for resident surcharge for both resident and non resident you all have understood that second rebate only for individual surcharge is applicable for all assessees but these rates are only of individual other assessees rates are yet to be done they will come for all but rates i have not yet done i have to complete individual to go ahead how can i go ahead without completing individual and third equal to will bring rebate equal to will not bring surcharge or even if it brings it will bring the previous level it will not change your rate so as and when it becomes greater than the respective levels greater than the respective levels your surcharge rates will change are these three differences clearly identified and understood by everyone chalo yes sir very good very good now focus please quantum of rebate was given to us in rupees actual tax or 12500 whichever is lower so all you are required to do is learn that amount of 12500 compare it with your actual tax if it was actual tax was lower then that was our answer 
and actual tax was higher than 12,500 was our answer. Correct or no? But rebate is not given in rupees. Rebate is given in percentage. So you need to always have an answer that this 10, 15, 25, 37, whatever may be applicable. You all understood what is applicable when? At 50 lakh nothing. Greater than 50 lakh to 1 crore 10. Greater than 1 crore, greater than 2 crore, greater than 5 crore. Whatever is applicable, whether 10, 15, 25 or 37. On what amount? On what amount? For example, my NTTI is 1.5 crore. Am I a case of rebate or surcharge? Achha, by the way, assessi can be a case of rebate. Please pay attention. Assessi can be a case of none of them. Huh? Income more than 5 lakh and less than equal to 50 lakh. No rebate also, no surcharge also. Between 5 lakh and 50 lakh. And after 50 lakh, assessi becomes a case of surcharge. So, 0 to 5 lakh, rebate. More than 5 lakh to 50 lakh, none of them. And more than 50 lakh surcharge. Correct or no? It can never in life be both of them. It can be rebate. It can be surcharge. It can be none of them. But it can never be both of them. That is not even an option. Does it make sense to you? Both of them is never possible. If you have studied statistics in foundation mathematics. In foundation do they have maths? In CPT, there was maths. You have studied probability, mutually exclusive events, two things that can never happen together. Yeah. Rebate and surcharge can never come together. Only one of them. Are you following? So tell me, this assessee is which case? Rebate case, surcharge case or none of them? Both of them is not even an option. Surcharge case. Chalo. Very accurately identified by you. It's a case of surcharge because the income has exceeded 50 lakh rupees. Once you cross 50 lakh, surcharge will start coming. Rate will keep on changing as and when you cross the respective limit. So at 1.5 crore, you can also conclude what is the rate of surcharge. Between 1 crore and 2 crore, 15%. No marks for guessing or answering this question. 15%. Very easily understood. On what is the question? This 10, 15, 25, 37, whatever is the applicable rate, it will be applicable on what amount? That is my question, dear students. Some students calculate surcharge of whatever is the rate on 1.5 crore. Huh. Yeah, like sir, tax is calculated on income only, no sir. So on 1.5 crore, we will calculate rubbish nonsense some students say sir actually if the income was only 1 crore then the surcharge would have been 10 percent mind you because it is greater than 50 lakhs 15 will not come but 10 will come no at 1 crore and because of the extra 50 lakh because that's the total income of 1.5 crore it is because of this 50 lakh that 10 percent is becoming 15 percent if this 50 lakh was not there, then it would have been 10%. So, sir, apply 15% on 50 lakh. Rubbish. Nonsense. Nonsense. I don't know what you have studied. Some students have already given the correct answer. What you have studied, what you have been taught, what you have done on your life. I really don't care about it. Let me set the rule very, very clear today. Surcharge will always be calculated on your basic tax liability always on your basic tax liability always surcharge will always be calculated on basic tax liability so when you have 1.5 crore and you have correctly concluded sir 15 percent surcharge sir i'm barabar, right absolutely right but for that you need to first calculate your basic tax and only then you can calculate the surcharge. So, please tell me. How will you calculate basic tax? First, tell me how you will do it. 
then you start calculating. Assume SSC is less than 60 years. See, in any question which is asking you tax liability, 60 years will be applicable only if mentioned no in the question. You cannot assume if the age is not given. So, unless and until I tell you SSC is senior citizen, your calculation will be on the basis of category A only. Tell me how will you calculate? That is how much? Into 30%. Nini, you minus 10 lakh, what is that amount? 95 lakh. Huh? 40 lakh. 1 crore 50 lakh, you minus 10 lakh, what is that amount? 95 lakhs. Uh, sorry, I thought uh, 1 crore 5 lakh. 1 crore 5, nini, this is 1.5 crore, 1 crore 50 lakh rupees. Yes. That would have been 1.05. Huh. Huh. So what amount you do 30%? 1 crore 40 lakh into 30%? Plus? 1,12,500. Effectively, do you understand the basic taxes? 43,12,500. And if you are not comfortable, it is very much possible that you are not comfortable doing it this way. Then you will have no choice but to do that. 0 to 2.5, no tax. 2.5 to 5 lakh. 5%, then that is your only way out. But you will have to develop this habit. So, take total income on your calculator, subtract 10 lakh, multiply by 30% and then add 1 lakh 12,500. It can be 1 lakh 10 also. It can be 1 lakh also. Okay. And we will be adding 15% surcharge, ladies and gentlemen, on this amount, on the amount of your basic tax liability. 15% surcharge will be applicable on basic tax liability. Is this understood now? So, answer the following questions very quickly. Question 1. Rebate will come for, please pay attention to the question. Huh? Rebate will come to whom? Resident, non-resident, none or both? Resident. Resident. But what about surcharge? Resident, non-resident. Rebate is only for individual. Surcharge is applicable to all SSEs. But we have till now studied rates only of individuals. At equal to 5 lakh, we get rebate. Yes. At equal to 50 lakh, will there be surcharge? No. It will come only when greater than. And when the rate is also changing from 10 to 15 or 15 to 25 or 37, everywhere it has to be greater than. If it is equal to, then the previous rate only will be applicable. At equal to 1 crore, 10 at equal to 2 crore 15 at equal to 5 crore 25 for increasing the rate it has to be more than 1 crore more than 2 crore more than 5 crore and whatever is the applicable rate whether 10 15 25 or 37 it will be applicable on basic tax liability whatever is the applicable rate it will be applicable on basic tax liability no problem concept of surcharge is still not over once upon a time it used to get over but all thanks to Tai, you know, Tai, Auntie, Kaki, whatever name you call her. She is the one actually who introduced these two rates, 25 and 37. Once upon a time, there was only 10 and 15. She introduced the 25 and 37. For high net worth assesses, high income earning people, obviously look at the quantum here. And this is an individual assessee, not a company. An individual earning more than 2 crore or 5 crore, unless you are an Ambani or Adani, very rarely you will get to see a case of a single individual human being having total income exceeding these figures. Think about it practically. So, these high net worth individuals, these big businessmen, they told her, ma'am, what do you expect me? What do you want from us? How much is the basic tax which we are already paying? 30%. You are subjecting us to a surcharge of 37%. By the way, please don't say that the total is 67. I'll come home and give you two tight slips. This 37 is on 30. I hope you understand that. And then there is a concept. We are yet to learn that 4% HEC also, which comes on this total. So this is not 71%. This is 37% of 30. And that on that total, Add 4%. If you have a calculator, you can take 30 plus 37 percentage button plus 
परसेंटेज बटन यू विल गेट एन इफेक्टिव टैक्स रेट ऑफ फोर्टी टू पॉइंट सेवन फोर फोर परसेंट दैट इज द रेट ऑफ इनकम टैक्स विच इज बींग एप्लीकेबल टू दीज एस एंड प्लस दे आर ऑल्सो मोस्ट ऑफ देम आर पेइंग एटीन परसेंट जीएसटी ऑल्सो सो एटीन परसेंट जीएसटी and 42% income tax that 60% tax on my income direct indirect total so sometimes i feel that dear government i will do business i will earn profits you keep the profits and give me the tax give me only the tax amount you keep the profits this is very high these high net worth individuals registered a protest and in a country like india you have to learn to the corporate sector you have to listen to the corporate sector for all those people having that communist mentality that government should not support corporates you all are also the people who is very happy when tesla earns profit one tweet by that owner and the price of bitcoin goes up and down only by only by one tweet we all know that what is the name of that guy musk musk only no ha huh. one tweet and bitcoin becomes from 35 lakhs to 25 and vice versa one tweet i am very proud of him wow what a great businessman what a great businessman whether bill gates or whether it is zuckerberg all of them and at the same time when our mukesh bhai is earning profits you have an objection it is because of mukesh bhai that you are attending this lecture let me be clear we used to pay 450 rupees for monthly data 2 gb monthly data 2 gb 450 rupees per month and he made it what initially it was only 349 now some companies have increased the tariff it is 549 but for 3 months and in that you are getting 2 gb per day hello then he has the right to make money he definitely has the right to make money he is giving you things at a low price he is therefore customer has an advantage he is generating employment he is contributing to tax revenue what problem do you have that is only jealousy if you feel that why is he earning money he has the full right to make money because he is passing on the benefit to the normal ordinary citizens also communist mentality cannot work if you want the country to progress then the corporate sector has to make money because they only have the power to make money don't forget we are ca articles and professors only the corporate giants have the power to make money you also reach there one day so these corporate leaders they said ma'am 2537 is very high for us kindly make some modifications here and she did that she is now saying for any assessee who is covered in 25 and 37 percent surcharge means whatever i am now discussing with you is applicable only to these assessees it is not applicable to these assessees this data that i am going to teach you now is applicable only for those who have surcharge in the range of 25 and 37 that means do you understand their ntti has pakka pakka definitely exceeded 2 crore rupees because 25 comes only after to karo and of course later it can become 37 also but you have to cross 2 crore to come here and only those people are going to come here that means i am only saying one line if you have understood that one line i will go further whatever i will discuss here is for people with income more than 2 crore for people with income less than or equal to 2 crore where surcharge may be 0% or 10 or 15 we are not covering them in our discussion right now this is applicable only for assessees with 25 and 37% surcharge understood understood no then i will go ahead finance ministry is mentioning four special incomes special type incomes four incomes if your income has exceeded rupees 2 crore only because of the following four incomes following four incomes stock market short term capital gain which is taxable under section 111 special rate of 15% at an appropriate time it will be taught to you 
स्टॉक मार्केट लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन विच इज कवर्ड अंडर वन वन टू ए विच इज अगेन स्पेशल रेट फर्स्ट वन लैख जीरो परसेंट बैलेंस टेन परसेंट फॉर फॉरन इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर्स वेन दे हैव कैपिटल गेन्स देर इज अक्शन वन वन फाइव ए डी of course you have got absolutely no idea about this section but can i at least tell you this much that this is also part of chapter 12 special rates yes. at least with the range of sections 110 to 115 bbg so where will these sections be taught to you yes, special rates and fourth income dividend income actually Two years ago, dividend income was exempt because the company used to pay DDT. But now dividend income is going to be taxable because the tax called dividend distribution tax is abolished. There is no DDT. Company will not be paying any dividend distribution tax. The dividend income will be taxable in the hands of the recipient. So now understand what is happening. most of these rich businessmen are rich because the market price of their shares is very high today the price of one reliance share is about 2200 rupees so once that price goes up it can go up to 2500 27 i see reliance going up to 3000 3500 in the near future because reliance industries limited holds 99.5% share capital of reliance retail how much 99.5% market capitalization of reliance retail is 12 lakh crores out of that 99.5% is owned by reliance industries and the total market cap of reliance industries limited is 13 lakh crore so are you trying to say that in that 1 lakh crore all the other industries like uh, geo uh like the uh, the petroleum business everything is covered in 1 lakh crore i think reliance shares are heavily undervalued they are 50% of their actual market price it is a good buy at any rate for anybody who understands little bit of stock markets can can you know understand this but let's not get into that because i am not here to teach you sfm that is not my responsibility and i am also not so good at it that i can actually teach you about stock market trading about futures and options i am myself making loss every thursday last thursday of every month what will i teach other people at 9:15 i have to check whether i have become rich or poor every day okay so let's not get into that please understand these individuals like mr ambani or mr adani they have invested in shares of their own company so these shares are giving them huge dividend these shares when sold are going to attract these special rates if short term capital gain then 111 if long term capital gain then 112 and because of these incomes their actual income can cross sometimes 2 crore rupees so what nirmala aunty said is if your income is crossing 2 crore rupees only because of these four incomes only because of these four incomes that means if you don't have these four incomes your income is less than 2 crore then ladies and gentlemen boys and girls i will only take 15% surcharge on your entire basic tax don't forget surcharge is not applicable on income surcharge is applicable on what amount basic tax, basic tax. i will not apply 25 and 37 i will apply 15% surcharge on your entire income means may i put it this way that 25 and 37 will not be applicable but at the same time she also mentioned that however if your entity i has already crossed 2 crore rupees without these four incomes without these four incomes already crossed 2 crore say your salary income is only 3 crore rupees is it possible then will 25% apply to you or if it is more than 5 crore will 37% apply yes sir it will apply but 
वॉट एवर इज द बेसिक टैक्स ऑन दीज फोर इनकम्स विच फोर इनकम्स वन 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 है वन वन टू है वन वन फाइव एडी एंड डिविडेंड इनकम दैट विल स्टिल बी सफरिंग ओनली फिफ्टीन परसेंट सर चार्ज रिलैक्स यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड एनी थिंग फॉगेट इट फॉगेट इट डोंट बी अ कॉपी कैट डोंट बी अ कॉपी कैट यू हैव नॉट कम टू क्लास टू बी अ कॉपी कैट लेट मी गिव यू एग्जाम्पल्स इन नंबर्स वंस आई गिव यू ओनली टू एग्जाम्पल्स लेट मी बी ऑनेस्ट टू एग्जाम्पल्स आर गुड इनफ यू विल अंडरस्टैंड बोथ दीज पैराग्राफ्स बोथ द पॉइंट पॉइंट ए एज वेल एज पॉइंट बी बिफोर आई स्टार्ट गिविंग यू माई एग्जाम्पल्स just remember one thing that the discussion is only if the total is more than 2 crore if the total income of the assessee is less than or equal to 2 crore is 25 or 37 anyways applicable not applicable then this discussion also is not applicable this discussion is applicable only for those assessees whose income has exceeded 2 crore rupees no problem we are going to divide our incomes into these four special incomes what are the four special incomes on which 25 and 37 percent surcharge is not applicable 111a 112a 115ad and dividend income four incomes on which that surcharge is not applicable and take your other income that other income can cover your salary house property pgbp anything can i say that will give you your total income and anyways whether surcharge is applicable or no or what is the rate of surcharge is dependent on entity i know this has to be more than 50 lakh more than 1 crore more than 2 crore more than 5 crore correct or no so let's see what is happening here example 1 these four incomes are 80 lakh rupees for any assessee what is the total of these four special incomes in our example 80 lakh and other income you say example salary because this is an individual assessee we can take salary as an example or you can take house property also as an example no problem what is that amount that i have taken 1.5 crore now instead of behaving like a copycat answer things that i am asking you simple questions i will ask you what is the net taxable total income after including everything come on what is the net taxable total income Sorry, 2.3 crore i wonder what took you so long 2.3 crore next just answer in yes or no we always decide surcharge on the basis of our entity i yes or no it doesn't matter whether assessee is resident or non resident it doesn't matter whether assessee is individual or hf surcharge comes for everyone and you have to look at this amount look at this amount now and tell me without you know ignore these two paras that i have written for the time being you don't cancel ah huh? you don't cancel i am using technology i can do this also you don't cancel ignore these two paragraph for the time being look at the entity i and take a call what is the applicable surcharge on this assessee 25% because after 2 crore applicable surcharge is 25% yes or no very good excellent but once an assessee comes in 25 or 37 that means once your entity i exceeds 2 crore then you should check is your income crossing 2 crore rupees because of these incomes how will you check it do one thing cancel this If you cancel this, is your income still more than two crore? No, no. it is less than two crore. Yes. yes, that means can I say just yes or no that my income is crossing two crore only because I have this? If I don't have this, it will not be more than two crore. Yes. Then, ladies and gentlemen, twenty-five and thirty-seven will not be applicable. 
you will have to calculate basic tax on both these incomes obviously if it is normal income then normal rate special income then special rate calculate the basic tax and on that basic tax we will apply 15 percent surcharge on our entire basic tax surcharge is never on income surcharge is applicable on tax amount so calculate tax on this calculate tax on this but the surcharge will be total 15 percent on entire basic tax means 25 and 37 will not be applicable at all now see if you are understanding only point a forget point b right now only focus on point a only point a see if you are understanding don't read point b huh? don't read point b read point a and see if you understand at least with the help of the example are you following if my income has crossed 2 crores only because of these 4 incomes then it will be 15% on our entire liability have you understood point a 100% chalo excellent now let me give you my second example this will solve all problems then if you want to add any example I will most willingly take it because I like participation of students in class in the last one and a half years I have taken endless number of zoom batches but I made sure that you never get a feeling of an online class you should always get a feeling that you are sitting in a classroom a physical classroom so let me take my second example these four incomes again I am taking 80 lakh rupees and your normal income I am taking this time 2.5 CR tell me the entity at this time that's 3.3 CR first we look at this figure and decide what is the amount of surcharge huh 25 37 will come after 5 crore 25 correct or no if your answer is 25 or 37 then you should check these points if our answer was 10 or 15 then these points are not applicable these points are applicable only if you are in 25 and 37 then what should you do remove and check last time if you remove these four incomes then your income was coming below 2 crore yes, and thus our income was exceeded 2 crore exceeding 2 crore only because of these incomes then our answer is 15 percent total surcharge no problem this time if you remove these incomes without this also as my income already exceeded 2 crore rupees without these incomes also that means if the question is is 25 percent applicable or if it was 5.5 then is 37 percent applicable then what's the answer yes yes 25 will be applicable yes 37 will be applicable but only on this much this portion will still go in 15 percent surcharge when i say this will go in 15 percent surcharge like an idiot don't apply 15 percent of 80 lakh or 25 percent of 2.5 crore don't forget surcharge is always applicable on what so calculate basic tax on this calculate basic tax on this this basic tax will go in 25 percent surcharge but this basic tax will still remain in 15 percent surcharge now see if you are understanding point b if the NTTI has already exceeded 2 crore, will 25 and 37 be applicable? Of course, after 2 it will be 25 and after 5 it will be 37. But will those rates be applicable? But whatever is the basic tax on these 4 special incomes, what are the 4 special incomes? 111A, 112A means stock market capital gains, FII capital gain and dividend income. On that, we will still apply 15% surcharge. So, if my income is exceeding 2 crore only because of this, then full 15%. And if it has already exceeded, then whatever is the surcharge that will apply on this income. But this will still go in 15% only. 
is this understood these are the two points a and b that i wanted to discuss with you just by writing the theory it is impossible that you understand but with the examples see example 1 is on point a and example 2 is on point b at least you all understood that much and now at this stage it is an open house if you want to add any third example for better clarification from my side whatever i had to tell you i have already told you if you want to add anything extra here it is an open house most welcome right now is the best time and that is the difference between a live class and a recorded class a student in a recorded class even if he wants to add he or she something over here and ask me it is not possible but students in a live class have this benefit utilize it make sure you understand that recorded classes are only to massage your laziness or your seven o'clock sharp that guy comes here so irritating here so boring here what every day morning seven o'clock i'll take recorded classes i will watch those classes whenever i am free in afternoon in office i don't have any work i'll watch lecture for one hour in the evening after coming home i'll watch one hour at least i don't have the stress of three continuous hours also no? my pen drive and google drive lectures are sold in every state of india every place where i see ai conducts exams dubai uae uh, uae matlab dubai hua nepal wherever there is institute ka exam center over there i have sales and as per record because our technical team gets all the data 70 percent students who buy the pen drive or google drive don't activate it only forget about watching the lectures and giving the exam they buy but they don't activate and if the pen drive is not activated only then there is no responsibility of the faculty here if you understand a live class also brings discipline two lectures if you bunk third lecture be prepared to face the music and whether a physical batch or online live batch i can very easily identify which student attended the lecture which student bunked the lecture which student came on time which student came late good morning somil which student came late which student came early i have track of everything okay so this is your opportunity if you want to add any example most welcome the rule is let me tell you the rule without these incomes if i am less than 2 crore then full 15% surcharge 25 37 no not applicable and without these incomes if i cross 2 crore then 25 37 will be applicable only on the other income on these incomes it will still be 15 when I say on income, it is actually not on income. It is on the basic tax. But it will be only 15%. If you want to add any example, right now, please. Anyone? Ha, Aditi. Tell me no amount. You tell me the amount. 2.1 CR. Okay. Very easy. Watch the total. 4.6 is right, no? Total. Look at this and decide surcharge. 25. If 25 is the answer, then you should always remove this and check. Remove this and check. Watch your answer. Is it still 25? But that 25 will come only on this. On this, it is still be. It is still going to be. 15 this is same as example 2 and when i have written this 15 and 25 i don't think that i need to again and again mention this that it won't be on 2.1 crore or 2.5 crore you have to calculate the basic tax and 15 percent or 25 percent will be applicable on the basic tax i hope i don't have to again and again mention this surcharge won't come on the income it will come on the basic tax yes please anybody else understood no aditi Tell me. 
कैन इट बी पॉसिबल दैट द स्पेशल इनकम इज मोर देन दर इनकम अफकोर्स इट इज पॉसिबल हु सेज इट इज इम्पॉसिबल सो वॉट सपोजिंगली दिस इज वन पॉइंट फाइव करोड एंड दिस इज एटी लैख रुपीज टोटल इज टू पॉइंट थ्री लुक एट दिस अमाउंट एंड डिसाइड सर चार्ज कम ऑन ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट बट बिफोर यू अप्लाई ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट वॉट शुड यू डू रिमूव दिस एंड चेक इफ यू रिमूव दिस इफ यू रिमूव दिस देन नॉट क्रॉसिंग टू क्रोड देन वॉट विल हैपन आई होप यू डू नॉट गेट दिस फीलिंग सर इट विल बी टेन परसेंट नॉन सेंस इट विल बी फिफ्टीन परसेंट इनकम हैज ऑलरेडी क्रॉस टू क्रोड Income has already crossed two crore. All the discussion that we are doing here is whether twenty-five or thirty-seven will come or won't come. Twenty-five or thirty-seven will come or won't come. Fifteen is already attracted. The moment your total has crossed one crore, the question is about twenty-five and thirty-seven. The moment you cross one crore, fifteen is applicable, irrespective of whether it is crossing two or no. Whether twenty-five and thirty-seven will come or won't come, irrespective of all that, fifteen is going to be applicable. I have also written that only. Pay attention. Fifteen percent, fifteen percent. I never said there is going to be ten percent. Ten percent will come if this amount was between fifty lakh and one crore. If this amount, the total amount, once the total is crossing two crore rupees. 15 is definitely going to come the discussion is whether 25 37 will come or won't come so please do not make the mistake of applying 10% here is that clear chalo any other doubt or difficulty any other example you want to put in yes anshika first step will be to check the total amount let me be clear about this here. as long as this is not crossing 2 crore so it will be 0 10 or 15 topic only is over if this is crossing 2 crore or 5 crore then 25 37 will come then you have to remove this and check and take a call under all circumstances whether 25 and 37 come or don't come 15 is definitely going to come because your total has already crossed that limit followed yes sir thank okay next ha ha so this is more like that the special income is for the entity so we have to evaluate it if your entity has crossed 2 crore will 25 and 37 come but on these four incomes it will always 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 be 15 so what we mean to say is that these four special incomes will never have 25 and 37 listen i am saying two lines listen these four special incomes will never have 25 and 37 15 is the highest surcharge second line is more important huh? and if my income is crossing 2 crore because of these four incomes then even the other income will not have 25 and 37 even the other income will have only 15 Now understood? Yes. Okay. So. Ha, Moini. Ah, uh, my name. So for special case, my income is about one crore, or uh, other income fifty lakh. Chat box, my you have written one point five and fifty. Ha, so one point five and one fifty. Ye one. This is one. Yes. This is fifty. This does not come in our discussion only. Why? Tell me why. then look at this apply 15 topic over 15 q why 15 because this is between 1 and 2 more than 1 a that is why followed this discussion that we are doing i would like to once again remind you all the examples that we have taken here this discussion is only for which assessee no 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 income income quantum which assessee 
more than 2 crore who is falling in 25 and 37 for that assessee we are doing the discussion if the total is only 1.5 crore the discussion is only not applicable apply 15 percent topic is over this may be special rate this may be normal rate add the two amounts and apply 15 percent on the total topic over understood mohini so i would preferably remove this example only from here because this is not applicable in the discussion that we have done take care anybody else has got anything uh, sir, I have got a question on the slab, right? Not a slab, right? It's my income is per lakhs. And 10 lakhs is special income. Uh -huh. As in, uh, say, uh, short term income. Uh -huh. So, how will the rest of the 2 lakhs get taxed? Is it like 20% or is it better? Is it just below 2 lakhs? Is it taxed? Obviously, it is below 250. It will not be taxed. And if you want me to add further over there, somewhere I am going to teach you one more concept. If this assessee is resident individual and resident HUF, which two assessees? Resident individual and resident HUF, they can also from the other 12 lakh utilize their basic exemption. There is still unexhausted amount of 50,000, no? So from 12 lakh also they can utilize 50 and only the remaining 1150 will be taxable. But that will come somewhere else so i only told you orally i am going to make you write like i am making you write everything here no i am going to teach you that in writing somewhere so don't worry okay but i think i have answered your doubt everybody is clear about the concept and calculation of surcharge ladies and gentlemen bad news the concept of surcharge is still not over what have we done till now are you clear four rates of surcharge 10 15 25 37 at all the levels, it has to be greater than equal to 50 lakh, no surcharge, and equal to 1 crore, 2 crore, or 5 crore than previous rate, whether resident or non resident, and for all assesses. The other assesses' rates may be different, but it will come for everyone. Hello? We also studied cases where 25 and 37 is not applicable. But in surcharge you need to know this concept called marginal relief without learning this concept the concept of surcharge cannot be completed it is very important to learn this concept it is listen concept a was rebate please pay attention a was rebate b is surcharge we are still in b this is a subheading under surcharge then we will go to c after finishing marginal relief We'll go to C. Says currently we are still under currently we are still under surcharge and marginal relief is a subheading under surcharge. Are you following? Some practicing chartered accountants are not aware of this concept practicing CS, rich experience of two decades, three decades, they don't know this. Even if they know that there is a thing called marginal relief, they don't know the calculation. Most don't know the concept. You will today learn the concept, the calculation, the logic, everything. Let's take an example. I am giving you two assessees, assessee A, assessee B. And I am giving you the net income of both assessees. The net income of assessee A is exact 1 crore. 100 lakhs, 1 crore. What is the entity I of Mr. A? 1 crore. And the net income of Mr. B is 1 crore and 5,000 rupees. Is it possible that someone has earned 5,000 more than Mr. A? 1 crore? 5,000. Of course, both of them have to pay tax. Mr. A will pay tax on 1 crore rupees. Mr. B will pay tax on 1 crore 5000. Makes sense. I am asking you a question. It may be a silly question, easy question, but it is a very important question. What is the difference in income of Mr. A and Mr. B? A very, very important question, though the answer is very easy. It, what is the difference between 1 crore and 1 crore 5000? This answer was not taken. To check whether you know maths 
This answer was taken to check whether you are awake and paying attention in class. How much has Mr. B earned more than Mr. A? Remember this. Remember this. We will need this figure somewhere. The difference in income is rupees 5000. Correct? Clear? Visible? Difference in income is rupees 5000. Let's calculate tax. Is Mr. A a case of rebate, surcharge or none of them? Surcharge. surcharge? At equal to 1 crore surcharge? Yeah. Equal to? Which one? 10%. 10%. 15 will not be applicable because for 15 it has to be greater than 1 crore. So, A is a case of 10% surcharge. Make sense? B is a case of surcharge, rebate or none of them. First question. Second question, the rate. 15%. But of course, we know this. Whether this case of 10% or this case of 15%, we have to first calculate what? Basic tax. Because only on the basic tax, we will be able to calculate our surcharge. So, we will calculate the basic tax first. Now, listen. 1 crore minus 10 lakh is 90 lakh. Whatever your calculator may give you. 90 lakh into what rate? 30 percent. And plus what? So, do we get 28,12,500? Check please, verify so that we go ahead. Case 2, as I see B, what amount will go in 30%? Are, hello, 1 crore 5,000. If you subtract 10 lakh rupees, you won't get 95 lakh. Huh? You won't get 95 lakh. At least tell me, let, let me tell you that much, it is not 95 lakh rupees. It is 90 lakh, 90 lakh 5000 into 30 percent plus of course again 1 lakh 12,500 what do you get? 29 lakh. No. 90 lakhs 5000 into 30 percent plus 1 lakh 12,500. If you apply 95 or anything like that, you will definitely get the wrong answer. Are everybody got it? Just check it again, please. 90 lakh 5000 into 30 percent plus 1 lakh 12,500, 28 lakh 14,000. Answer my question very, very carefully because if you don't participate, you won't understand. What is the difference in income of the two assets? 5000. What is the difference in tax already? 1000. I will show you some magic. Listen, tell me one thing. This extra 5000 which B has earned, B is falling in which tax bracket, which slab rate? 30. That means this 5000 must have been taxed at what rate? 30. What is 30% of 5000? 1500. That's the difference of 1500. Correct? That means already out of the extra income of 5000, I have already paid 1500. Do you understand? My income is exceeding only by 5000. Out of that, 1500 has already become my tax liability. Correct or no? Because of the 30% bracket. Now, what is going to be your next step? Obviously, we have already decided this is a case of surcharge. In the case of Mr. A, it is going to be 10% because it is equal to 1 crore. But in the case of Mr. B, it is going to be. 
because it is greater than 1 crore. Correct or no? So we get 281, 250 here. See, I am so fast. I calculated surcharge in one second. Don't make fun. I have done this example 10,000 times in my life. Even if I don't memorize the amounts, you can't help it. They automatically enter your brain. 15% of 28 lakh 14,000. 420 to 100. Yes or no? Now, let's discuss what is the total of basic plus surcharge. In the case of ASSE A, 30, 93, 750. And in the case of ASSE B, 32, 36, 100. If all of you all have got these amounts and you are with me, then I will go ahead. All of you all have got these amounts? Because now is the time to discuss things, ladies and gentlemen. Ready for the discussion? Then participate and tell me what is the difference in income of the two assessees? 5000. B has earned how much more than A? 5000. Everybody agrees with this? And B is paying how much extra tax compared to A? What is the difference in tax liability? Difference in income is how much? 5,000. Income, income. Difference in income? 5,000. Difference in tax? 142. 350. That song comes to my mind. What the hell is going on? What the hell is going on? Difference in income? 5,000. And difference in tax 142, 350. That means, can I say you are making B pay extra tax of 142, 350 only because of 5000? Do one thing remove this 5000 from B's income, then B's income will become 1 crore. Just remove 5000, it will become 1 crore. This will be the tax. If you remove 5000, then the income will become 1 crore. And this will be the tax. Correct or no? So we need to agree to this. That extra 140 to 350 is coming only because of 5000. That is rubbish. Nonsense. And thus, I can tell you the concept of marginal relief in one line. This is the talent of every individual. Huh? Someone can talk for hours, two hours continuously, but still not explain what is marginal relief. I, I don't need to give two hours. I have the talent to conclude in one line. And that one line is record if, if you want. Record it if you want. The difference in tax cannot be more than the difference in income. The difference in tax cannot be more than the difference in income. How much is the difference in income, by the way? 5000. Difference in tax can be maximum 5000. It cannot be 142, 350. In 5000 also, if you understand, we are taking 100% tax. Yes, and 5000 more, we are taking that full 5000. That is still okay, but taking 140 to 350 because of 5000 is nonsense. Do you understand that? And I'll say that line for one more time. Last time, record it if you want. The difference in tax cannot be more than the difference in income. What is the difference in income? 5000. So the difference in tax can also be maximum how much? Maximum difference that will be allowed will be 5000. So, if this is 3093, then this can be maximum. Maximum this figure can be 
3098750 it cannot be more than that maximum this can be 3098 so obviously the tax of assessee a will come to 393750 and what is the maximum tax that we can take from B? It cannot be more than 5,000 more, more than a difference of 5,000. Can I say this 3093,750 is still remaining tax liability? But in the case of B, here comes the concept. How much tax was already derived in your outer column? 32, 36, 100. Out of that, we need to retain only 3098,750. So, we will have to remove something. Tell me that amount that you have removed. 137. 350. This, ladies and gentlemen, is called marginal relief. This is called marginal relief. Whole concept is in one line. The difference in tax cannot be more than the difference in income. If the difference in income is only rupees, come on tell me how much? 5000, then the difference in tax cannot be more than 5000. And if it is actually more than 5000, then remove that difference and that removal is going to be called marginal relief. Understood? That finally concludes your concept of surcharge. So, once upon a time, surcharge was a very small concept, only 10 and 15. Now, we have 25 and 37. We have cases where 25 and 37 not applicable. We have also discussed the concept of marginal relief. If you remember what I told you yesterday, I am requesting you that if you really want to score good marks in direct tax, if you want to get your exemption, if you want to repeat the results of past students, the only solution is revise on a daily basis. If today after class you give 20 minutes to whatever I discuss, you will understand everything. If after 7 days you open, you will need 1 hour. If after 1 month you open, you will need 3 hours. And maybe after 3-4 months if you open, then you might want to join the class again. You will see stars in broad daylight. So the only correct solution is to revise on a daily basis. Ask any rank holder. Any rank holder. This is the first suggestion that they will give you. Okay. Tomorrow will never come. Whatever you have to do, do it today. Alright, that was the concept of surcharge. Everything is clear in surcharge? Huh. Yeah, sign up. I have given you marginal relief only for B. So, whenever you have to calculate, you just take that amount. Just take it, no. This is no assessee. I am doing calculation only for B, where income is 1 crore 5000. No problem. Just mentally imagine any random assessee who has got income of 1 crore. Or don't imagine any assessee. Just imagine if B's income was 1 crore. Then what would have been the case? That is the only way to do it. I will do one thing. Now that Sainath 
has brought this up and i might check notebooks now nah? i am crazy i am telling you you know you have got very little experience with me it's only one and a half class gone case this is i am telling you ah i might tell you that on the camera show your notebook whether you have done it or no otherwise i'll remove you from class because you are a ca final student i cannot spend time to discipline you discipline has to come automatically so you will calculate tax on 50 lakh and 1000 only one assessi sign up only one assessi 50 lakh and 1000 okay you have to calculate for this assessi but as a dummy figure i'll tell you how to do it while i am giving you the homework i'll tell you how to do it orally first step is going to be 50 lakh 1000 basic tax you will find that on that basic tax you will add surcharge of 10% because it is more than 50 lakh that will give you your total now for comparison purposes imagine someone having income exact 50 lakh still there will be basic tax but no surcharge so the difference between the two figures cannot be more than 1000 and if it is more than 1000 you remove that much understood someone else also had something please make sure you do it ha huh? it is in your interest this okay someone else also had something to say ha huh, drishti for even to be getting marginal relief from the point of it only even more than 5000 and difference of 5000 and that amount is only marginal relief no no he is a rare case who has earned only 5000 there will be people who have earned 50 lakh more no How often do you get to see people who have just crossed that figure? Okay, so if he is very close to the figure, then we don't want him to pay unnecessary extra tax. But once you go in one point five crore, then there is not going to be any problem, no? Okay, yes. Anybody else? Hmm. I was checking if you are paying attention. I said three fifty only, but that was mistake apparent on record. If you make such a mistake in your return of income, you can file a revised return three months prior to the end of the assessment year or completion of assessment, whichever is earlier. And if the assessing officer makes a mistake, he can pass a rectificational order under section one fifty four, four years from the end of the year in which the order was passed. They are called clerical mistakes. I was checking if you were paying attention. Very good. Done. उजन के लिए If the difference in tax is more than fifty, take one lakh and check. Take two lakhs and check. Check what is that level where the difference in tax is coming to less than or equal to difference in income. Then there is no question of marginal relief. Till the time difference in tax is more than income, you will have to give marginal relief. Followed? You do the trial and error. That's a part of your homework. Understood? Chali. Let's go ahead. if there is anything else also as you are aware we have already discussed this we will be reserving last 10 minutes every day for the purpose of doubts and screenshots anyway so never feel that yaar i have got some doubt remaining what to do at the end of every class and it is not necessary that you ask today only say it is possible that today you were heavily occupied because of some reason two days you have additional office work but after two days you are free and you revise the full chapter my well, revising daily is the most appropriate thing but for some reason if you are not able to do the next day you will do and you will ask your doubt on the third day or the fourth day i am going to answer all your doubts are relax don't ever worry as far as doubt solving is concerned till the time you give your exam i am going to be available for doubt solving till your exam okay chal let's go ahead third and the final concept the concept of health and education says H E C that will also change your tax liability. 
government provides free education up to the age of 14 years in government schools do you know that free education up to 14 years yes for government government also provides free health care facilities to the people in government hospitals treatment is free we are not discussing the quality here but treatment is free at least i don't know how many people are aware of this that people of the age 45 and above there are government drive in vaccination centers free vaccination so when i took my mother for vaccine we had to in nsci worli it's a drive in center so you go in the car that nurse will come and inject the vaccine sit in the car only don't step out of the car also and wait there for there is a waiting time of 15 i think most of you all must have taken at least one dose no you must be aware of this there is a waiting time of about 15 20 minutes and then you have to leave i paid for my vaccine mine was a paid one and the whole idea behind taking the vaccine is now i have realized that if i have to go somewhere i will need that certificate that is the whole idea okay so so government provides free health facilities free education facilities what is the quality we are not discussing here sir i am not taking free education sir i am taking paid education the government is providing free whether you want to avail or you don't want to avail that is your choice for all these things will the government incur expenditure for providing free health care facilities free education facilities and for anything you want to do in life anything you want to do in life you need paisa first and then passion don't say i am very passionate about something at the end of the day you will need paisa also and same is applicable for the government they need money and who will fund these free schemes the tax payer every time you pay your tax every time every time mike mark my words mark my words every time you pay tax that means when will hsc come always listen in rebate there were three conditions resident individual income up to 5 lakh hello resident individual income up to 5 lakh resident individual income up to 5 lakh yes or no in surcharge also there was one condition that income has to cross the criteria though residential status was irrelevant nature of assessee was irrelevant but still income has to cross 50 lakh no hsc will come for everyone whether you are a rich case or a poor case whether you are a rebate case or a surcharge case everyone has to pay health and education says whatever is your tax liability you have to pay 4% extra so if your tax is 100 you have to pay not 100 but 104 200 you can't pay 200 you will have to pay 208 whatever is your tax liability that will be increased by 4% first question when will hsc come the easiest of all there is no condition when will hsc come always everyone has to pay this and second question 4% on what 4% on step number 1 calculate your basic tax basic tax calculation is indispensable you cannot opt out of it for rebate also you have to do basic tax or 12500 whichever is lower for surcharge also the rate 10 15 25 30 7 is on this and for hsc also you need this 4% of basic tax in your basic tax subtract rebate so there are some students who make this mistake they first add hsc then they give rebate rubbish rubbish no please you will first subtract rebate but can i mention here if applicable because rebate is not applicable for everyone if there is rebate subtract it add surcharge can i mention here also if any because surcharge also does not come for everyone and with respect to these two can i also mention that it is never going to be both either it will be rebate or it will be surcharge sometimes it can be none of them only basic tax income more than 5 lakh less than equal to 50 lakhs hello income more than 5 lakh less than equal to 50 lakh it can be none of them only basic tax 
on that amount you apply 4% that means listen what is the whole idea complete all the steps before this point C complete basic rebate surcharge everything and that amount with which you have entered point C after doing basic rebate surcharge marginal relief everything finish everything that amount you have to add 4% of that amount that will become your total tax liability total liability obviously if you have any prepaid tax prepaid tax in the form of advanced tax or the payers have deducted TDS or something then the net amount that you have to pay can pro probably reduce or sometimes it is possible that it's a refund case also in my case I never get my full payment I only get 90% of my payment because 10% is deducted in the form of TDS so most most of the years because I am below the basic exemption limit and there is already TDS deducted whatever is deducted I get a refund in fact most years of that refund is possible only if you are able to file your return income tax return on the portal if you are not able to file the return then there is no question of getting the refund in the present circumstances I don't know how many people have got awareness of this but nobody is able to file their return only you face some problem till last month I also faced this problem but yesterday was a big big achievement I have filed three income tax returns on the new portal all the clients can return my wife only files I don't file I don't have that much time also but three returns myself my wife and the HUF account HUF also is going to come these three returns I only file because all the accounts also are a top secret no one other than me is aware of the inflow and outflow no one not even my wife what is the total inflow what is the total outflow no one knows Array, it is something that I can't show anyone you know below basic exemption limit people have got a wrong image and then they see below basic exemption limit so it is not worth showing anyone that's the whole idea here so I have filed three income tax returns it is possible that your prepaid taxes are higher than your liability and accordingly final amount can be refundable also even if it is payable it can be less than your liability here we are not discussing the final amount payable or refundable we are discussing liability calculate basic tax give rebate if applicable add surcharge if applicable and on that total amount under all circumstances whether you are resident or non-resident whether you are male or female whether you are individual HUF whoever you are 4% cess will be applicable and this cess money will be used for funding of health and education schemes of the government 4% always applicable is that understood all right with this ladies and gentlemen we finish tax calculation hush nash we have only finished individual and that also in the older regime <gasps> We have to finish all other assesses, then we get done with the old regime and then we have to learn the new regime. Are you understanding? But individual tax calculation with rebate surcharge HEC hereby comes to an end. Some students are like, sir, only in individual tax calculation we consumed one full lecture and in the second lecture also two hours are over. So we have only one hour left for the second lecture and we are still done only with individual and sir like this no, we will never able we will never be able to complete our portion on time sir then now what sir let's do one thing first let's go to the second assessor i hope you are understanding the numbering here let me scroll and show you individual was our first assessor we decided to learn tax rates we started with individual first assessor we finished everything basic rebate surcharge HEC and now we are going to our second assessor HUF association of person body of individual AOP BOI artificial juridical person AJP HUF AOP BOI artificial juridical person 
all three will be taught together. Not because I want to complete your portion in a rush. Hey, fast, fast, fast. We are already late, so finish fast. No, 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 no. Why are we merging these three SSEs in one? Guess. You can't guess. Same tax rates. That is why. Never, never, never you will get a feeling. That feeling. Yaar bhagaya. No, never. I am never in a hurry. At least as, as long as and as far as I am teaching my portion. I am never in a hurry. Worst case scenario. What will happen? If I go very fast. And if I go very slow. The difference is going to be about 5-6 extra lectures in the total syllabus. Difference between extremely fast speed and extremely slow speed. 5-6 lectures. For a matter of 5-6 lectures, I cannot spoil the quality. Okay. So, we will be going in a peaceful speed. Then sir, why are you merging? We are merging because the tax rates are same. And you want more good news? More good news? The rates are exactly same as 1A. 1A means what bro? Individual less than 60 years or non-resident any age. What were the rates? First 2,50,000 no tax. Then up to 5,5%. .5%, up to 10,20%. And after 10,30%. Absolutely same. Absolutely same. That's basic tax. And again, if there is any special rate that, that will also be applicable, it is absolutely same as one. After basic tax, what are the three concepts? Concept number one, rebate. You only tell me. Not applicable. Why not applicable, sir? Only for individuals. Very good. Next was the concept of rebate. Sorry, after rebate the concept of surcharge and after surcharge the concept of HEC. Congratulations. Abhinandanam. Same. 10, 15, 25, 37. So listen, these assessees will have surcharge after 50 lakhs. Only firms and companies will have surcharge after 1 crore. Companies and firms will have surcharge after 1 crore. Other assessees will have surcharge after 50 lakhs. And CES will come always 4%. CES 4% always comes and for all assessees. Same. Absolutely same. Okay. The maximum that institute can play with your life here. Maximum. Uh, yes, is that. They will ask you a question. Mr. X got married at the age of 20. Mr. X got married at the age of 20 and opened his HUF on that day itself. Mr. X got married at the age of 20 and opened his HUF on that day itself. And today Mr. X is 80 years old. Then what is the age of the HUF? Sixty. What will be the basic exemption limit? <gasps> it will still be 250. It will still be 250. This is the maximum that institute can play with you. Nothing more than this. Highest is this. Highest. Okay. Highest is this much. Likewise, for AOPBY also they can ask you that there is a trust or a club which was opened 60 years. A, a club like Lions Club is 100 years old. So, what will be the basic exemption limit? What will be the basic exemption limit? Still, it is going to be 2,50,000 only and same thing applies for artificial juridical person also. Is that understood? Excellent. Fantastic. So basically, the tax rates are going to be absolutely 
same as 1A. Basic exemption will be always 250. Rebate not applicable because it is applicable only for individuals and surcharge HEC are going to be absolutely same. So, whatever time we have consumed in learning individual tax rates, we are going to save that time over here. Is that clear? Hello? Yes. Okay. But, but I don't want to keep you blank. I need you to have little knowledge about all of them. See, even if today you don't know what is HUF. Supposingly, you don't know what is HUF. But you know the tax rates. You will get marks in CA final exams. Because you will get marks for calculating tax. You don't know what is AOP BOI, but you know the tax rates. You will get marks. You don't know what is AJP, but you know the tax rates. You will get marks. But I am here not to make you a CA. I am here to make you a good CA. I am here to make you a CA better than anybody else. So you need to have a little knowledge at least about all of them. Let me talk about them one by one. HUF stands for Hindu Undivided Family. First time you studied HUF was when you were in. 12th standard Hindu undivided family four generations of a Hindu male have got right over a family property that means if Mr. X has acquired any asset so children grandchildren and great grandchildren will have right over the property in India there is a law called Mitakshara law that is the Hindu succession act according to which there is going to be succession of these four generations so whenever the family will have any asset or family will have any income a share has to be paid to all the members of the family everyone will get share which is why in the good old days people used to have more children the two brothers the one who has got more children will get more share because everyone has equal share hello so what they thought was Instead of going and taxing every individual member, what we will do is we will make HUF an assessee. Take tax from the HUF and once the HUF has paid tax, any income distributed amongst the members will be exempt because the HUF has already paid tax on the total income. Share of profit from HUF is exempt because the HUF has already paid tax. Are you following? That is the concept of HUF. Hindu undivided family, four generations of Hindu male. But listen, Hindu undivided family is allowed. And the Hindu Succession Act, which is popularly known as Mitakshara law, is also followed by Buddhist, Jain and Sikh communities. So Hindu, Buddhist, Jain and Sikh, four are allowed to open HUF. Hindu, Jain, Buddhist and Sikh. There is no concept called Parsi undivided family. There is no concept called Christian undivided family. There is no concept called Muslim undivided family. Because in all the other religions, the concept of succession is not as per Mitakshara law. Hindu succession act is not being followed. Now, there are plans of having a common civil code, uniform civil code. But unless and until that is adopted, Hindu succession act is followed by Hindu, Jain, Sikh and Buddhist family. Only they are allowed to open HUF. And HUF is nothing but a tax evasion tool in our country. Nothing but a tax evasion tool. Sir, how sir? Sir, listen. Supposingly, I earn 20 lakh rupees in a year. Please pay attention. First 10 lakh will be taxable at slab rates. And the second 10 lakh will be taxable at 30%. Correct, no? What I will do is open HUF and tell the clients or customers, whatever be the nature of business, to pay money to HUF instead of paying money to me. And I will divide my income into 10 lakh in my books and 10 lakh in HUF books and consequently I will be able to take slab rate benefit in both. So, that second 10 lakh rupees, which would have got 3 lakh tax liability, as per slabs, will have only 1 lakh 12,500. Always the first category of assessing. And thus, we end up saving tax of 187,500. You understood the maths here? 
instead of 30 percent we are giving slabs so instead of 3 lakh it is 112 500 and thus the tax savings is 1 lakh 87 thousand 500 the highest possible tax saving by opening huf is 1 lakh 87 thousand 500 that's good amount of tax saving and people open huf only for that because you are getting slab benefit in gst also supposingly my turnover has crossed 20 lakhs and thus i am a case of gst so what will i do i will take the turnover in huf and divide the turnover i can take benefit over there also and thus people open huf only for evasion purposes anybody over here who has got any family member who works in income tax assessing officer or cit or ccit or anything anyone who has family member in mumbai there is a class you know who is the owner of that class siddharth surana huf so i get the division benefit and plus being a coaching class activity we are eligible for presumptive taxation 44 ad take only six percent of turnover we'll talk about that some other day pgbp is reserved for discussing what is presumptive taxation but that is how we split so if you know any assessing officer please don't tell him once what happened Sir, can we open more than one how how can you have two families No, no, I have not completed that. Let me complete. Let me first complete. Okay. There was an assessing officer who messaged me on Instagram, Instagram or Facebook, one of those places. That sir, I am working with the income tax department and I saw some of your lectures on YouTube and I was very much inspired till the time I was supposed to assess only assessees in my city. Till that time I had idea about how they work and my work was easy with faceless assessment. I am in Lucknow, but I am cases. I am getting cases of Mumbai, Delhi, everywhere. Big corporates, and I am not in touch with income tax provisions because of they changing so frequently. Some chapters I have forgotten. Can I buy your video lectures? I said very clearly. First, tell me, are you actually a student or you are my AO and you are doing checking by taking my lectures? First, tell me that. And then I said that these lectures are oriented towards CA final exams. Of course, I discuss the concepts, I discuss the provisions, sections, it is the income tax law. But your idea is to get the practical idea about it. I discuss practical aspects, very limited areas, wherever relevant. Majorly, our target is CA final exams. He said one very nice thing. He said, sir, don't worry. Even if you say in class that you have got a property in London, that does not make you a case of investigation. Because only making a claim like this does not prove that you actually have a property in london and even if i am your AO and i have to take action against you i have to substantiate it with evidence and consequently don't worry about it he is a very good friend of mine though now in terms of age of course he is elder than me but he is my student and the place of the person who teaches is always superior to the place compared to the place of the person who is learning then age is not the criteria out here all my life i have taught students who are Elder than me, ultimately it is started accountancy. I started teaching at the age of 22 years. And people in CA are of unlimited age. There is no limit. I have a student of 61 years also, last batch itself. There is no upper limit in CA. And thus, I am still senior as far as being the teacher is concerned. So, basically, I told him that, sir, my HUF, I... Divide my coaching income, but you don't tell it to anyone, please. HUF is a tax evasion tool. Have you understood that? 187,500 is the maximum amount that you can save. Have you understood that? In order to, now some are like, okay, sir, wow, today only I will open HUF. Are wait, please, wait. You cannot open HUF like this. Once upon a time, there was a rule that you can open HUF only if you have a male child. So this discussion will also answer your questions, Simran. Only if you have a male child. In 2005, the rule changed. Male, female, one and the same. You cannot distinguish between them. I wonder who was that idiot who used to distinguish earlier. Male, female, both are absolutely same, absolutely equal. And whoever made the change, made a sensible change. Any child, male child or female child, you can open HUF. 
cut to the present date whether you have children or you don't have children that day when you get married so this will also answer that question when can you open two hfs that day when you get married you have to make an affidavit on stamp paper that i am getting married on this date and thus i am opening my huf i am the person who is starting the family the person who is starting the family the head of the family in mitakshara law is called the karta i know you have heard that term the karta and following co partner members are called co partner of course at the time of marriage it is only one person the spouse in my case it was myself on my marriage date i opened huf with my wife being the co partner that affidavit has to be submitted to the court you get the stamp of the court we call it notary and that stamped affidavit has to be sent to income tax department that i have opened a family they will issue a pan card in the name of huf with that pan card you can open a bank account and now start taking income in the name of huf it is nothing but a tax evasion tool sir if they are aware that people are evading taxes then why don't they abolish huf do you understand the political aspect here any government who will abolish the concept of huf will never get reelected at the end of the day no matter how much you say ultimately political decisions will always be keeping in mind the interest of majority community if hindu sen jain jain uh, hindu jain sikh and buddhist all four communities you are going against them that means they are saving taxes right now and they will not be able to save in future if a government abolishes that concept they will not vote for that government again and by the way this was not a concept introduced by modi this is a very old concept this is a very and it is not going to go anywhere you have to cater to the majority community and all throughout your life even if your friend circle if you have decided which movie to watch today and there were two options then you always said one thing majority wins the whole thing called democracy is to decide and you know what what the majority says that that is what democracy is all about because you cannot keep everyone happy there will always be someone who is unhappy what your target should be to keep maximum people happy hof is never going to be deleted or abolished no matter how revolutionary your thoughts are okay cut to aop bio you all have understood the meaning of hof calculation part is already over same as category 1a and we have also discussed rebate surcharge says aop bio ha uh, Once, when you open the new HUF as karta, you have to exit the father's HUF. You exit your father's HUF and you open your own HUF. But of course, that's not a part of tax technically. That's a part of the Hindu Succession Act under the Mitakshara law. You have to see the provision. If you go into the depth of it, let me be honest. एकदम डीप में यू आर सपोजिंगली करता डाइज हु कैन बी करता इफ देर इज नो मेल मेंबर हुई बी करता आई हैव सीन केसेस वेर सम फीमेल्स हैव बिकम करता इन द एब्सेंस ऑफ द हस्बैंड बट आई एम नॉट आल्सो 100 परसेंट श्योर बट वॉट एवर इज गिवन इन द हिंदू सक्सेशन एक्ट यू हैव टू गो स्ट्रिक्टली बाय दैट बट दिस थिंग आई नो दैट इफ यू ओपन योर ओन एच यू हैव टू एक्जिट योर फादर्स एच यू ओके चल एओपी बी ओ आई इफ आई हैव टू डिफाइन दैट अ ग्रुप ऑफ पीपल हु हैव कम टूगेदर फॉर अ कॉमन पर्पज और गोल इंग्लिश example you have heard of lions club i already gave you that example lions club road trek anybody from anybody who used to attend college in south mumbai means of course i know you all are scattered everywhere but attended college in south mumbai second best college of south mumbai hr ha kc to does not come in the list but second best college of south mumbai hr correct no yeah hr ha second best साउथ मुंबई में एनएम की यू हैव साइंस यू हैव आर्ट्स हाउ कैन यू बी द बेस्ट कॉलेज बाय प्रोवाइडिंग वन स्ट्रीम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ओके नो डिबेट और डिस्कशन सी एज बेटर देन एम बी ए जय हिंद इज बेटर देन एच आर नो फर्दर डिस्कशन ऑन दिस प्लीज लेट्स गो हेड इन अवर क्लासरूम डिस्कशन in hr people never went to college they attended only that rc road trek club and all that correct no so you know what is lions club you know what is road trek club these organizations 
they come together for a common purpose or goal they are association of person body of individual irrespective of how old basic exemption will always be 2 lakh 50 thousand and if i have to tell you what is artificial juridical person you remember listen 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 when the scientist vasikaran made the robot chitti vasikaran was an individual but the robot was not an individual no so if chitti earns any income today I think he is foolish when you have got such powers. Supposingly, Rithik Roshan from Krish movie. You know, he can like this, he can jump from one building to other. If if I have that power, I am a Mar I am a Marwadi by birth. I will make people you know, sit. 5 rupees thane, 15 rupees bhivandi, 20 rupees don't be I will make people sit. Come. Come. Are, are you following what I am saying? Okay. So, if that robot, that chitti earns any income, do you understand? The robot is not individual. If he is not individual, he is not also HUF, company, firm, AOP. He is not anything. But if you earn income, you fall in this category. What is artificial juridical person? Anybody who is earning income but not falling in the other categories. That is individual, HUF, company, firm, AOP. Local authority. Robot Chitti was an example. Supposingly, you have a pet. Pet at home. A dog or a cat or maybe any student out here who has a pet at home no way you have a dog anybody else Ria has a dog Nea what do you have sorry dog okay others don't have any of the female students of the class who is married in CA final quite a few students are already married any of the female students who is already married? Yes. So, you are not aware but you have a pet at home. I just want to remind you, you also have a pet at home. And that pet has to definitely follow all your instructions. And that's the same story irrespective of where you go, which country you go where you belong it doesn't make any difference that story is unchanged supposingly supposingly keeping that husband case aside two students in the class have a dog at home okay supposingly you make him participate male or female i'm not getting into those details you make him participate in a race and he wins the race and it's a prize money of five lakh rupees he is not individual HUF, company, firm, AOP, BOI, local authority, but has to pay tax. Artificial judicial person. Now, don't say, sir, how they will take tax from a dog? He will bite. Ah. No, no, no. You, the caretaker on his behalf, are responsible. You, the owner, are responsible. You are the authorized representative. You have to do the compliances. Filing of return, paying of taxes, if summons are given. You have to be present in the office of the AO. All the responsibility will be on the caretaker. But as an SSE, even the dog is liable to pay tax. That is artificial judicial person. What is AJP? Anybody who has earned income but not falling in the other categories. Individual HF company from LLP AOP. That is AJP. We are not going to leave anyone. Everyone has to pay income tax. Is that understood? So we get done with three categories. And the, these three categories, let me be honest. Calculation part as far as your tax paper is concerned was nothing because it is same. The discussion was on understanding the meanings of these concepts. But I believe now you have understood the meaning of these concepts as well as the calculation part. Chalo. Excellent. Let's go ahead. Next, we have an assessor called firm. Wherever we will cover firm, we will also cover LLP. And coincidentally, the tax rate of local authority is absolutely same as partnership firm. Absolutely same. As far as LLP is concerned, LLP is firm only. All income tax provisions applicable to firm are applicable to LLP. Income tax does not even distinguish between them. Income tax considers them as the same as AC. Local authority also, tax rate is same. This won't be done here. 
in our textbook chapter 11 so this is volume 1 first 16 chapters are volume 1 no chapter 11 is a chapter called assessment of firms every income tax provision applicable to partnership firm from the first section to the last section everything that is applicable to partnership firm is going to be discussed in that chapter and everything will also cover the tax rates so partnership firm tax rates we are not covering in introduction class we will be covering when we do that special chapter a special chapter created only for whom partnership firms over there we will discuss that okay orally if you want sir at least tell us something so partnership firms don't have slab rates they have flat rate 30 percent so 10 rupees income 3 rupees tax 100 rupees income 30 rupees tax 1000 rupees income 300 tax flat 30 percent of course rebate won't come that you already know because rebate comes only for individual surcharge will come hsc will come surcharge will come after 1 crore for firm and company surcharge will always come after 1 crore and hsc 4 percent always so we will wait for partnership chapter where we will peacefully study all tax provisions including tax rates of firms and with which we are left with only one assessing individual HUF, AOP, BOI, AJP, firm, local authority, six done, only one left as rightly pointed out company. Please understand as a CA final student, this becomes the most important aspect for you. Think about it. Think about it. You are going to become a chartered accountant in the next few months. And once you are a chartered accountant doing tax calculation of individual and HUF is not your level for such calculations you will be hiring articles in your firm no Aray, which article that article who wants morning leave for classes evening leave for classes weekend leave for classes that article who wants study leave for six months twice a year study leave of six months twice a year observe the depth of my statement six month study leave twice a year all that work will be done by the articles you are made to do bigger and better things you have to learn corporate taxation because it was also not a part of intermediate company taxation is not a part of intermediate so you have to do that and for company taxation we have a special chapter chapter number 15 minimum alternate tax a specially dedicated chapter exclusively applicable only for companies mat minimum alternate tax good juice on the house give me a cheer give me a cheer yay you can call it minimum atlo tax because whatever actually the rule is normal tax or mat whichever is higher so minimum this much you will have to pay that is what you refer to minimum art loan correct marwad is on the house no. yes. minimum athro tax a minimum this much you will have to pay maharashtians on the house give me a cheer minimum evada tax but that a a for evada whatever whether you understand or you don't understand normal tax of a company or mat whichever is higher so an exclusive chapter applicable for companies so in this chapter i will teach you how to do normal tax how to do mat and normal tax or mat whichever is higher will be the liability of the company so here only i will teach you the normal tax rates also with surcharge with hec everything you all know that rebate is not applicable you all know that hec is always going to be four percent what is the surcharge after one crore what is the basic tax all that will be taught to you in a special dedicated chapter chapter number 15 mat so partnership firm tax rates we will learn in chapter 11 and company tax rates we will learn in chapter 15 okay both old regime new regime everything in the respective chapter with which in the old regime we are left with one assessee actually most cooperative society please please pay attention they fall in aop by only so normally cooperative societies will fall in aop and pay tax as per aop but there are some societies which are registered under the societies act and income tax distinctly identifies such societies 
and has given a separate system of slab rate for such societies such cooperative societies have got slab rate system but very easy and basic slab rate first 10000 will be taxed at 10% so that way if you observe there is no basic exemption limit what is the rate of tax on first 10000 of cooperative society between 10000 to 20000 you will have 20% tax and more than 20000 30% tax very simple and basic slabs 10 20 30 10000 20000 more than 20 Societies registered under the Societies Act will not have AOP slabs and will have these slabs. 10, 20, 30. But obviously, if there is anything chapter 12, what is chapter 12? At least tell me that. Special rates. Special rates. That will be applicable. Always applicable. Chapter 12, you have to always segregate your income. Normal rate and special rate. That is obviously going to be applicable and this tax is going to be your basic tax. These slabs are never final. So, after basic tax, what are the concepts? Concept 1, rebate. Please give me the answer. Not applicable. Concept 2, surcharge. For individual HUF, surcharge comes after 50 lakhs. But for cooperative society, surcharge will come only if your net taxable total income is more than 1 crore. That means, can I say, after 50 lakh, there will not be any surcharge. Only more than 1 crore. Same as firm and companies also. Firm and companies also don't have any surcharge after 50 lakh. Firm and companies also have surcharge only after 1 crore. 12% of your basic tax. Only one rate. No 10%, no 15, no 25, no 37, only one rate. Up to 1 crore, no surcharge. More than 1 crore, up to infinity. It can be 10 crore, 100 crore, 1000 crore, 10,000 crore. Only one rate, 12%. Only one rate of surcharge, 12%. In fact, if you want for knowledge purposes, same rule for partnership forms also. Up to 1 crore, no surcharge more than 1 crore, only 1 rate, 12% up to infinity. No complication. If you observe carefully, 10, 15, 25, 37, all that is bringing complication. Here, there is no complication. More than 1 crore, up to infinity, 12% surcharge on your total income. No problem. And this requires no explanation. You only tell me. What? Same, 4%, always 4% for everyone. No problem. These are tax rates of cooperative society. Be careful about the surcharge part. Rest of it is very easy to understand. A simple slab rates they have given us. And with this, ladies and gentlemen, we reach that stage of our life where we are done with the existing taxation regime of all assessors. Old regime hereby is over. And now that old regime is over, it is only appropriate that I also teach you the tax calculation as per the new regime because once we finish this and we go to our next chapter, a very first chapter of our portion is double taxation avoidance agreement. In the very first chapter, there will be a calculation, there will be a question calculate tax liability. You have to calculate old and new and you have to check what is beneficial. You will need that also and thus I will now teach you the new taxation regime but i am purposely mentioning it as alternate taxation regime so listen this new regime was introduced last year only ay 21 22 just one year ago so for them it was actually new so it was new taxation regime do you understand for you people it has become one year old so we should avoid saying new regime like this for how long it will remain new it is no longer an amendment. So, instead of saying new regime, it is only change in terminology. I am calling it alternate taxation regime. Four sections under alternate taxation regime. There is a section 115 BAA. There is a section 115 BAB. There is a section 115 BAC. There is a section 115 BAD four sections. 
these two are applicable for companies b double a and b a b b double a is for all companies b a b is only if you are a newly incorporated manufacturing company but it is for company and company taxation has already told you which chapter are we going to learn company taxation in mat so 115 b double a and b a b will be taught where in minimum alternate tax we have not studied only no for companies we have not studied the old regime also the where and how can we go to the new regime obviously nahi this is applicable to individual huf have we studied old regime tax rates so now we will learn new also and this is applicable to cooperative society have we studied old regime tax rates so we will learn new also so totally there are four sections but in these two or in this chapter i am going to teach only these two ye dono section these two sections i will be teaching you where company sir then if you are not teaching us only why you are writing their name just write these two and just teach us this only no why you are mentioning listen please please listen in all these four sections there are some common points certain points which are common in all four if you observe the chronology of section numbers also can you see they are continuous back to back sections b a a b a b b a c b a d they are in one sequence which also means that there is a lot common in them so what i will do is i am teaching you these points with the intention of teaching these two sections because anyways my agenda my target in introduction chapter is only b a c b a d b a a b a b i will do in mat i am not teaching only you are in this chapter but with this also if i teach you the common points and if they are applicable for these two sections also then there is no harm in learning that these common points are applicable for all the four sections anyways even if not today some day we have to learn b a a b a b also no these are common points applicable for all the four sections all four sections so difference till now is only the assessing first two are for company third is for individual hua fourth is for cooperative society but what is common in all the sections of new taxation regime alternate taxation regime following points since so many years our government is being pressurized by assessees citizens taxpayers sir please reduce tax sir please reduce tax sir please reduce tax sir please reduce tax auntie is saying i am going to reduce your tax so one thing is common in all four sections that whatever is the rate as per old regime companies we have not studied only but individual hua we have studied the slabs 05 20 30 30 cooperative society we have studied the slab 10% 20% 30% 30% whatever is the tax rate as per old regime in the new regime the rate of tax will reduce but if you want this you will have to forego a long list of tax benefits forego tax benefit means give away tax benefit it is not difficult if you pay attention to take a small example supposingly assessee is doing business in special economic zone doing business in special economic zone makes assessee eligible for a deduction which is given in a section 10 double this is chapter 7 scz is scz is a chapter in our portion chapter number 7 you get deduction in 10 double 100% deduction for first 5 years 50% deduction for next 5 years there is a certain calculation chapter 7 i will teach you that calculation but my question is this if you are getting a deduction in scz what is happening to your total income just tell me that much total income it reduces, it reduces. means already your taxable income has been reduced and now you are forcing us reduce tax rate reduce tax rate okay we are ready to reduce your tax rates but you have to forego these benefits and this is only an example that i took in 115 bac 
there are 20 tax benefits totally in income tax all the individuals who are taking some salary benefits like live travel concession house rent allowance all those tax benefits that you are taken you have taken you have to forego all that forego the tax benefits now tell me what will happen to your total income if you forego tax benefits if you don't take your deduction stop taking deduction income will increase we will reduce tax rate so this is common in all the four sections i am going to teach only bsc bad here in this chapter b double a bab i will teach you in math chapter but these two points are applicable for those two sections also what is common in all the four sections they will reduce your tax rate in comparison to the existing tax rate but you have to forego certain tax benefits that means taxable income will increase rate will reduce no problem i was very happy when the new regime was announced very happy sir you know why supposingly a new regime is announced listen so sez chapter deleted if i talk about salary chapter so many sections like house rent allowance or leave travel concession all that deleted in pgbp there is a deduction called additional depreciation there is a deduction for scientific research there is a deduction for specified business 35 ad you have to forego all those deductions that means can i say all those sections also removed the biggest catch of new regime the biggest catch of new regime deduction under chapter 6a will not be available see scientific research or sez business everybody cannot have but deductions like life insurance premium medical insurance premium atc atd everyone has no even a poor guy like me has you will not get deductions of chapter 6a also i was very happy wow one more chapter reduced so if i go by new regime sez chapter deleted deductions chapter deleted so many sections of business profession chapter deleted wow but i want to kill this aunty if given an opportunity like in rang de basanti movie they killed the defense minister now while these new provisions were introduced i was so happy wow sc is removed wow chapter 6 is removed one by one chapters are removed that means my workload reduces now but the truth is that it is an option that means take chapter 6 a deduction pay tax as per old rates and don't take chapter 6 a deduction pay tax as per new rates my work has doubled new regime was good if i was not supposed to teach old rates now i have to teach old rates also and i have to teach new rates also and tell the students that you choose whichever is beneficial i have to teach both are you are you following the new regime is option that means can i conclude that from now onwards every time you do tax calculation you will have to do tax as per old tax as per new and it is optional of course whenever you get an option between two points which one do you choose obviously wherever there is higher tax to contribute towards nation building cas are partners in nation building no nee? wherever obviously there is lower tax liability no but for that you need knowledge of both no without knowledge of both how will you calculate whichever is lower without calculating both you will have to calculate two tax liabilities in every question now onwards next point is the new regime an option if you want to exercise that option it is mandatory that you exercise on or before your 13912 due date and if you are not comfortable with section number it is okay we are still only in the second lecture you can write due date of return filing that means new regime will be available only if you choose before due date of return filing if you don't choose before the due date of return filing then by default you will fall in the old regime new regime is applicable only if you opt for it and that also you have to opt on or before the due date of filing the return on or before the due date of filing return 
वन एडवांटेज ऑफ न्यू रेजिम इज ऑफकोर्स दैट योर टैक्स रेट्स आर गोइंग टू रिड्यूस बट दैट्स अ स्कैम बिकॉज द नंबर ऑफ टैक्स बेनिफिट दैट यू हैव टू फोर गो ऑटोमेटिकली विल इंक्रीज योर इनकम टू सच अ हाई लेवल दैट द रिड्यूस टैक्स रेट्स ऑल्सो विल ब्रिंग योर लाइबिलिटी टू ऑलमोस्ट द सेम इन फैक्ट वेरी मच पॉसिबल दैट समाइम्स विथ लोअर रेट ऑफ टैक्स ऑल्सो योर लाइबिलिटी इज हायर बिकॉज दीज बेनिफिट आर यूज 20 tax benefits when I am saying chapter 6 is just one of them. ऐसा नहीं chapter 6 ए का every section I am counting as one in 20. One of the 20 is the entire chapter 6 ए You can imagine the number of benefits to be foregone there. But for the new regime, there is a second benefit, a hidden benefit which most people are not aware of and people are not discussing also this in offices. Today when you are filing the return in office. You are deciding that which rate to take, old rate or new rate. You are only deciding on the basis of tax calculation. This is one thing which unfortunately is not being discussed only in CA forms. That any assessee who goes in new regime, obviously company will go in these two sections, and these assessees will go in their respective section. Any assessee. who goes in the new regime that assessee will not have any minimum alternate tax or alternate minimum tax listen please mat is a tax which is applicable for company normal tax or mat whichever is higher please pay attention huh? and amt is a tax which is applicable for other assessees all assessees other than company normal tax or amt whichever is higher so for company it is normal or mat whichever is higher and for other people it is normal or amt which is higher this is chapter 15 in our textbook this is chapter 16 they are the last two chapters of volume 1 mat amt so company if opts for these provisions mat not applicable only normal tax as per new regime mat is not applicable only and which is the tax applicable to these assessees mat is not applicable which is the tax applicable amt that amt also will go away so for the company mat will go away and for the other assessees amt will go away the liability of every company is normal tax or mat whichever is higher but in new regime mat is not applicable only only normal tax to be calculated the liability of other assessees is normal tax or amt whichever is higher but in new regime amt is not applicable that means when i say mat or amt year whichever is applicable for company mat is applicable in old regime but not applicable in new regime and for other assessees amt is applicable in old regime but not applicable in new regime that's a second benefit because sometimes it is possible that your mat or amt is higher than your normal liability and thus being higher you have to pay that but in new regime it is not applicable only and further when we learn these chapters i am just telling you orally in both these chapters it is mentioned that you need to get a report of a chartered accountant certifying that your mat calculation or your amt calculation is correct like an audit report if mat amt is not applicable only can i say that report is no longer required that report of ca no longer required so that overhead cost the professional fees that you will pay to the you will pay to the ca to do that report that will also be a saving no in the new regime of course you are thinking about it as a ca today it's a loss as a ca if you think it's a loss because if the company is saving professional fees you are the one who is losing it but think about it as an assessee then mat amt not applicable and plus the overhead cost of getting that ca report also is going to be saved this is a hidden advantage unfortunately practically everybody is today discussing because 2021 was the first year so today when people are filing their return they are discussing old or new old or new old or new old or you unfortunately nobody is discussing the fact that new has got one more secret hidden advantage that is mat or amt as the case may be will not be applicable if the assessee has opted for new taxation regime have you understood this hmm so 
मैट एंड एम टी नॉट बींग एप्लीकेबल इज एन एडवांटेज नो नॉर्मल टैक्स और मैट विच एवर इज कम ऑन वेन आई सेट गुजूस गिव मी अचर यू गिव मी अचर नो मिनिमम दिस मच मीन्स इफ मैट इज हायर दैट मीन्स यू हैव टू पे मैट बट इफ मैट इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल ओनली देन वेदर इट इज हायर लोअर डजेंट मैटर नो इवन इफ इट इज हायर यू डोंट हैव टू पे इट and same applies for amt also only the assess is different mat is for company amt is for others now understood okay let's assume mat is lower then there is no real advantage because anyways mat is not to be paid if it is lower then normal only has to be paid but that overhead cost will still be saved no that professional fees that you will pay to a ca to make the report yes so in conclusion in the long run it is going to be an advantage only followed next comes a very very important aspect and for understanding that important aspect please check the section number range and if you check the section number range then you should definitely come to a conclusion they fall in chapter 12 chapter 12 range you remember so do all the four sections fall in this range That means, can I say all these sections are a part of Chapter Twelve? Supposingly, there is any other income of Chapter Twelve. Supposingly, I have got casual winnings. I have got long-term capital gains. Are these incomes which are covered under Chapter Twelve? Chapter Twelve will apply. even in new regime and that is applicable for all four sections therefore what am i trying to say please pay attention first calculate your entity okay that's the total taxable income on which you have to calculate tax split it into two parts incomes which are taxable at special rate are a part of chapter 12 and incomes which are not a part of chapter 12 are your other incomes your incomes taxable at normal rates you have to decide what sir old or new old or new old or new old or new that old or new decision will apply only on this particular portion this will always go in special rates for your normal income it doesn't matter what you choose you choose old regime your choice you choose new regime your choice that decision will be for your normal income a special income will always be taxable under special rates even in new regime special income will be taxable at special rates normal income you can decide old or new the option of old or new is new regime an optional thing is new regime optional that option is only for your normal income special income will always be taxable at special rate and these points are applicable for all these four sections though the agenda of this introduction chapter is only to teach you bsc bad because i have done individual hof and cooperative society already though the intention is only to teach you bsc bad i am also going to cover these common points of b a b a b though these sections will be taught to you in mat chapter so what are the common points of the whole scheme new regime of the respective assessee we will reduce your tax rate of course when we do the individual section we will come to know how much reduction but for this reduction very very important aspect you have to you have to you have to you have to forego your tax benefits that's a very big danger we will have to see which tax benefits to forego in all the respective cases two sections in this chapter two sections in mat chapter this new regime is going to be optional that means can you stay in the old regime this is one point with which i have problem if they would have made the new regime mandatory then there was no requirement to learn old regime in fact chapter 6a scz all these chapters also would have been abolished but this is optional so you have to do both and if you want new you have to exercise your option on or before the due date of return filing then only the option is going to be available another secret advantage of the new regime is mat which is applicable to companies in old regime will not apply in new regime 
and amt which is applicable to other assessees in older regime will not apply in new regime and lastly if your total income comprises of any income taxable at special rate then even in new regime that special rate will continue to be applicable are we clear on this okay now that i have told you the common points i just would also like to point out a couple of differences a couple of differences 115 b double a 115 b a b they are applicable to which assc and 115 b a d applicable to which assc and 115 bac i am removing from here that is applicable to which assc there are two differences means in these three there is no difference in these three there is no difference but 115 bac has got two differences matlab listen these six points are applicable for all four common points tax will reduce but forego tax benefits optional before the due date of return filing no mat mat amt and special rates will apply but there are two things which are different only in this section that means can i say these three are still together only the difference is only in which provision individual hcu what is that difference under 115 b double a b a b it has been mentioned that this is new taxation regime only for a domestic company so this is actually not company this is domestic company under 115 b a d it has been mentioned that this section is only for cooperative society this is not cooperative society this is resident cooperative society it is mentioned domestic it is mentioned resident but under individual issue of nothing is mentioned they have only written individual issue here they have mentioned domestic that means can i say foreign company is not eligible here they have mentioned resident can i say non resident not eligible here they have not mentioned anything and if they have not mentioned anything then tell me bac will be available to which assc individual huf resident non resident none of them both of them it will be available to resident non resident both because they have not mentioned anything that's one difference so b a b a b is only for domestic company b a d is only for resident cooperative society but b a c will be for both that's one difference these six points are same in all four you all have understood that there are two differences only in bac the other three are still same so in these three we still have domestic or resident mentioned that means can i say in these three there are no differences except the eligible assc the difference is only in bac second difference under b double a b a b domestic companies and b a d resident cooperative societies it has been mentioned what once you have exercised the option that is you went in new regime then you will forever forever lifetime be in new regime the old will never 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 in your life come back you want to listen to the english 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 listen option once exercised can never be changed and will continue to be applicable forever direct tax can be made very easy if you relate this with your day to day life sir how sir sir listen ca codes old codes and new codes do you have the option to leave old codes and go to the new codes whoever registered in the old codes first of course correct or no once you go to new codes you cannot come back old to don't no once exercised you will always remain in new you can never come back to old so can i say this is same as ca codes and that means company and cooperative society once they go in old they can never never come back once they go sorry in 
new, they can never never come back to old. It is one way, one way, no exit possible, only entry possible, no exit possible. Followed? But the rule for BAC is different. First different, first difference you already observed. What was the first difference? Available to resident, non-resident both. Second difference is a little complicated. Okay. First, you have to go and check whether the assessee has PGBP income or the assessee does not have PGBP. PGBP means income under the head business profession. Income under the head business profession. You have to go and check whether the assessee has got business income or the assessee does not have business income. This part is easy to understand. Assessee not having business. Can I say salaried employee? Retired person having only rent or pension or something like that. Having capital gain, having other sources, having house property, having everything except. Congratulations. You can change your option every year. Means listen, 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 listen. This year you want to be in old. Stay in old. Next year you go in new, you can go. If you are this assessee, once you go in new, you know you cannot come back to old. This assessee, hello. But this assessee, listen, old, 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 new, 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 old, new, 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 old, new, new, old, new, old, new, old, new, old, new, new, old, 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 new, old, 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 new, 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 old, new, old, 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 old. You can change this option year on year basis. One year you like old, you go in old. One year you like new, you go in. New, the option can be exercised on a year on year basis. Salaried employees, etc., can change the option every year. But of course, I won't mention the point again. If you want to go in new, whichever year, can you change that every year? Whichever year you want to go in new, you have to decide before due date of return filing. But that I have already mentioned, no, that is anyways common for all the four sections. But you can change the option every year on a year on year basis so of course there is a difference but the difference is easy to understand what is the rule for company and cooperative society once they go in new what is the rule no, no. domestic company and resident cooperative society but i am asking about point number two once they go in new then they can never come back to old. And if we talk about individuals without PGBP, they can, they can change every year. And of course, the second point you've already seen that this will cover resident and non-resident both. But this is the most complicated aspect of all. Most complicated aspect of all. Okay. And this will be done at sharp 7 o'clock tomorrow morning.